Hey everybody, it's Scott. You know, Scott from Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, your favorite podcast. If you're joining us today for the first time, this is part five of a multi-part series designed to help introduce and discuss the source material for the HBO show Watchmen. If you're unfamiliar with the story, or you like to start from the beginning of a story, you may want to check out our post for episode one. Alright everybody, welcome to Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch the HBO show Watchmen. I am Scott. And I am Sam. And welcome today for our wonderful breakdown of Watchmen graphic novel issue number five, titled... Chapter five, Fearful Symmetry. Fearful Symmetry. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, How you doing today, Sam? Uh, What's going on, Scott? How you been? Oh, I've been great, man. I've been great. I've been really enjoying so much about this comic. Excellent. Uh, you know, just really, really loving to reread. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. The going back over and everything is just, uh, it's just bringing back certain memories and, you know, just finding certain tidbits and Easter eggs that were inputted that you're just picking up on. And it's, mm-hmm. it's just a pleasure to just read all over again. Oh, man, it's so great. It's so great. And, you know, we'd love to hear from you guys. You can email us. Uh, we got an email address, watchingwatchmen at nerdcyclopedia.com. Uh, and where can they find us on, uh, where can they find us on uh, Twitter? Uh, we got the Watchmen podcast. That's with no T at all, we- one at the end. <laughs> um, you can also um, hit us at um, Neurocyclopedia, our regular, you know, um, Twitter um, handle. Um, find us on Facebook. Search for us. Yeah. Search for the Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen um, Facebook group. You know, on, right on Facebook. Of course, we have our own um, page on Facebook, the Neurocyclopedia at Neurocyclopedia as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's just some of the places you can find us. You can some also catch us outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you... we we occasionally as a nurse occasionally go outside every so often. <laughs> you know. Um oh also too um we're now available if um on like our podcasts are everywhere tune in um Apple Podcasts, Google Play, you know wherever you can find your favorite podcast or listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. Absolutely. So share us, you know, tell people they need to download, subscribe and rate our podcast. And as always, uh we do appreciate uh, the five-star reviews and if you don't do that, we reserve the right to give you the business. All right, all always. <laughs> the business will be gotten. <laughs> That's actually why I got yeah. into this business right. was to give people the business. <laughs> That's <laughs> that was the whole genesis behind <laughs> all of this. That was the origin. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's my origin story. My bad <laughs> tendency is I wanted to give people the business. This got origin story. <laughs> but who? But how will they get this business to the people? I think the people need this business. Oh, man. Uh, All right. Get some kryptonite for this guy. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So before we <laughs> before we jump into a discussion oh, of the man. new chapter, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I wanted to go ahead and, and uh, just kind of talk a little bit, you know, like we always do. My wife, as everybody knows, is reading through uh, this comic for the first time uh, with us just to make sure we're all on the same page as far as what's going on. Yep. And, you know, she uh, some of her feedback, she definitely thought uh, that Dr. Manhattan's humanity had sort of been um, there was something about him when he was a human, like he didn't have agency. Mm, okay. So there was, she was focused on that hmm. and, uh, she thought it was, uh, a little bit, she thought it was still a little bit sleazy that he starts, you know, uh, making out with, uh, Lori when she's 16, even, even though he does actually know the future, <laughs> like, was there kinda, like, you know what He's I mean? Like, Oh, this is my girlfriend. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Like he couldn't, couldn't be patient. The man with no aging. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought those were those were some of her interesting comments. Right. She's really enjoying it, and awesome, uh, you know, thank awesome, you again, awesome. uh, dear, for uh, uh, helping us out with that. We appreciate yep. it. Yep. <laughs> All right. That. So today, this uh, chapter is called "Fearful Symmetry," and it is, in some ways, uh, a very linear chapter. You know, we just got done with talking about Doctor Manhattan and how he perceives time as, 
you know, uh, he, he almost sees his future the way we see our, see our past where we can't change it. Right. Like we right. wish we could do things different in our past, just like he wishes he could do things different in his future. Right. <laughs> so, uh-huh. uh, today we're going to be moving away from the, uh, God's eye view of, uh, <laughs> of, the, of everything. And we're going to be sticking with some more or, on the ground people. How's that yep. sound? It's grounded, grounded. And you can't get more grounded than Rorschach. <laughs> That's right. Mr. Rorschach, the, uh, the terror of the underworld is going to pay his buddy Moloch a visit and he this is unbidden so he breaks in right at the beginning here uh Eddie Jacoby the uh the aforementioned Moloch gets his gun and uh, investigates finds uh his refrigerator <laughs> which <laughs> if we'll remember uh Rorschach has previously <laughs> busted out of <laughs> he loves busting out of refrigerators <laughs> he's crazy and, um, about the refrigerators um yeah I mean and we also got to point out too um that once again Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons and John Higgins are doing all this through no dialogue pretty much you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. the only dialogue you get on the first page is that on the last panel and ninth panel and then you don't yep. get um then you get some more dialogue on the second page the third page you know, he's just going through until he actually gets into the, um, looks into his refrigerator and says, <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, the Rorschach signature, <laughs> Rorschach's jacket, and then um, you just see. R- R- Rorschach's signature is just classic, man. <laughs> uh, you just see Rorschach standing behind him. Just that's, what a great shot that is. That's a, that's a Batman tendency right there, popping out of nowhere. Seriously. Now, what if Rorschach actually wrote behind you just like, you know, like as if he were looking in, in a mirror. It's, you know, as if he had to, <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the D starts, you know, at the beginning and, you know, just he just wrote backwards. I mean, that would just be a crazy thing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that Rorschach, I swear. He's always up to something. Always up to something. But Usually yeah. it's murder. Mm-hmm. Tonight, playful writing. <clears throat> Tomorrow, more murders. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a night off. Uh, so so he he uh, decides to, uh, so, you know, obviously Moloch is scared of Rorschach, just like everybody would be. Right. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to be afraid of this man. Mm-hmm. And uh, he sort of, he says, uh, you got that gun, you don't have a license for it. He's like trumping up charges like he's, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? <laughs> like right. he's the police. He's like, oh, that's very bad not to have a license for your gun. Okay. And then he tells him that he needs to cool down, so he shoves Moloch in his fridge. So this time it's Moloch's time to be in the cooler. Yep. He's going to cool in the cooler. (laughs) (laughs) You cool out. Oh, Oh, man. man. Uh, So uh, Rorschach and Moloch have a conversation where Rorschach informs him that he thinks the cancer list is uh, Blake's list and the cancer list are the same. And it's so strange that you and Janie, you know, all the people around Dr. Manhattan will get sick. I mean, it seems like quite an interesting coincidence. He's sort of having that sort of interrogation. Uh, And Moloch says, uh, you know, I don't know anything about any of this. And Rorschach's like, man, I don't like that tone of voice and shuts him up in the fridge. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Ror- Rorschach is just a living comedy routine. Look at the way he, um, you know, just the stuff that he grabs to eat. You know, he was over on Dryberg's place just eating beans out of a can. You know, and sugar cubes. Not, and sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. <laughs> and now he's in uh, Moloch's place. You know, he just grabs a raw egg. <laughs> yeah. well, he's at protein. <laughs> he got to have his protein and everything. I mean, he's a guy that gets some fist fights a lot. We didn't say anything about it when Rocky did it. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then here we first seen that, okay, um, we get a uh, we get an indication of, you know, um, Rorschach under his mask. So he has stubble. You know, mm-hmm. he um, he lifts his mask up and, you know, he has to eat, I guess. So um, yeah. we find that he has stubble. Um and <laughs> he and he and he stuffs um you know Moloch right back in the fridge. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, just shoves him in the fridge and then he lets him out and says, "Listen, if you remember anything, you know, you can leave a note outside the Gunga Diner and I'll I'll come find you." <laughs> uh so uh there's um you know, so that that's the, we see Rorschach's journal as he uh walks home uh and oh, not yeah. uh, he he also yes. makes sure that he um lets Moloch know that you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that Rorschach! <laughs> <laughs> and he apologizes to Moloch about the mess. That is just I know, hilarious, right? man. Sorry about the mess. Like ter- what? Ter- 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 terrorizes the guy, and then just you know, okay, well, sorry about the mess, and you know, I can't, yeah. can't make. Oh, I'm like, well, I'll break a few eggs. So you know, goodbye. 
I mean, Rorschach Rorschach is not problematic because he's not funny. (laughs) Let's let's be clear about that. No no one's up in arms because of the jokes are bad. That's not... (laughs) That's not why that is. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, there's a mention of the of an island here. So I want to mention. I want to point that out. They're talking about artists and writers here. Oh, and yeah. then uh, we have the cops who investigated the comedian killing the homicide detectives uh-huh. are on the scene of another uh, another homicide, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, father who cracked under the pressure of World War III and murdered his children and then himself in front of his wife. Right. And it's not a particularly pleasant thing. Um, and they sort of refer to Haley's Comet here as an omen of doom, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, something that's not, you know, uh, Haley's Comet was really there in 86. It's the last Mm -hmm. time it was here. It's seen as a omen of doom, Mm -hmm. uh, through history. The comets are seen as that. That's a literary Mm -hmm. trope for Mm -hmm. those who are unfamiliar with what that is. And it's neat. That's awesome. It's one of those things where if this were written now, I'd say, oh, they're really trying, trying to, you know you know anchor this in reality right Right. but it's not it's written 86 there just was a comet (laughs) around right (laughs) so interesting Uh, um the more i'm looking at this graphic novel here just with this page where they're talking about uh, whether two detectives are there um Mm. and i'm just going back to one thing more kept saying about this this graphic novel being unfilmable you know you just can't it can't be put in a film or whatever i think he was more or less talking about a movie, you know, right. This, the more I look at it, you know, the way, the way, um, content is, I'll put it nowadays. This is definitely a TV series here. This oh, is for definitely, sure. you know, it should have been always put into like a, um, you know, some sort of limited series or mini series or whatever, um, to, to, to condense this into like a two and a half hour movie, three hour movie is just not doing it justice. But yep. a lot of the way that everything is paced as far as the way they, they're pacing scenes and everything, especially mm-hmm. with them showing this, um, this Island and in, in this, um, picture, right. Um, it could definitely be put into like a, um, you know, just little tidbits like that could be put into actual, um, TV series limited, like I said, limited mini series. Oh, yeah. You know, when they say it's unfilmable, I've always thought that's such an int- a weird thing to say about this comic book because, you know, we, we talk about how there's not thought bubbles. Everything's presented so cinematically. Yeah, it's, like, think exactly. About, right, right, right. Like Moloch walking through his house, it feels like that's every shot, like shot mm-hmm. and then he walks down the stairs, mm-hmm. shot and we see him go, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It seems like a lot of cuts and and so it seems so... Your storyboard's uh, like, right there. Mm-hmm. The exactly, page. Right, exactly. Right. And not to get ahead of ourselves because we're going to talk about these things in their course, but <laughs> that's why uh, the Watchmen movie, which I'm sure everyone's aware of, mm-hmm. all the best scenes are the ones with no dialogue. Mm. Yep. All the silent scenes are actually really good. So that's some, that's a that's a personal preview take. That's foreshadowing for the podcast. It's called a tease, <laughs> folks. A tease. Ooh, we stay shall tuned. Get there. I'm gonna stay tuned. I got more hot takes like <laughs> <laughs> like when they don't talk. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they don't talk. <laughs> that's the good part. Whenever they do not speak. <laughs> it's a music video now. Oh man! I've okay. always thought Zack Snyder makes really good music videos, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, that's a that's a slam, light slam, kids. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so now we're treated to the newsstand. Uh, we have uh, you know our newsstand people. They're reading, and the intercutted uh, looks like the the word bubbles of the Black Freighter. Right. So the the Black Freighter. Um, you know, we cut back with our hero. He is, uh, what he is doing is he needs to escape because he knows the black freighter is going to his home. So he makes a raft of bloated corpses, rationalizes it as having no choice and embarks heading east. And then he snatches a seagull out of the air and eats it raw whole on the, <laughs> on the deck of the, so he, uh, <laughs> he eats the pretty, pretty, pretty vivid there. Pretty vivid. Vivid and, and, and like the the graphic uh, the way that you see is like um you know the uh, the blood dripping out of his mouth there in that panel mm-hmm. and then you turn the page and the next shot is is Dan at lunch holding a piece of chicken <laughs> 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 it's so you know it's so uh, it's it's just such a, an interesting parallel you know and you yeah. look at that yeah and, and a good and a good cinematic um, transition too so I don't know Alan Moore I, I'm thinking more and more this is filmable. You know, I mean, it seems filmable. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying I'm up for the challenge because I'm not. I'm, not, hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> staying away from it. It's not, I can't film it, you know. So. I'm just saying like Peter Jackson. I mean, come on. Uh, up hey. lately. <laughs> right. Hobbit's done. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Anyway. So uh, Dan and Lori at lunch. Lori says, I'm out of money. 
And Dan says, why don't you stay with me? And uh, Oh, that's right. The government cut her off, right? Yeah. Yeah, they cut her off. They took all her money and her stuff because, like, the whole, like, her job, her one job is to make sure Dr. Manhattan didn't leave. And you can understand her disappointment. Uh, Lori, you have one job. I mean, you can job. at least get that. One job. One job. You can do that. One Lori. job. One job. Okay, Lori. Yeah. <laughs> or she goes to retreat to Dan, so, you know. Yes. So so Dan will take her in. Dan, that's the gist of course. Of so Dan's going to see. Dan's such a good guy. Me. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice dude. He his he's, he's the, I think you know Dan's definitely the nicest. I think of the, of the nice <laughs> you think <laughs> he's the nicest one. I mean, everyone else, I'm like, I don't know, they're all a little narcissistic, but Dan just seems cool. Like you know, he's relaxed. He he has Clark Kent tendencies, Superman tendencies. Yes, you know. <laughs> yes, he has Clark Kent tendencies. I love it. <laughs> he's just from laid back, dude. Uh, <laughs> so uh, then we cut to Rorschach's journal mm-hmm. for October twenty first, nineteen eighty five, mm-hmm. and and he says, and this is you know, he says I had fallen asleep without removing the skin from my head. And then he says, he peels off his face and nobody knows who I am. Uh, he notes that there were some gang people, you know, some gang members painting, defacing a, uh, defacing a door. But the weird thing, this is a weird, that weird thing they were drawing, that, that's weird graffiti, yeah. right? It's like, it looks like the shadows from the atomic, you know, you see the shadows of the people who are vaporized uh-huh. by the atomic bomb. Right. It's, it looks nothing like, nothing more than that, right? right. I mean, it right. looks like that. Right. And it's, it's so... It's so uh, weird for that there would be a gang graffitiing that like those that's an art gang you know running around it's like Andy Warhol's financing them or something you know it's crazy and also notice too look at the way the panel was you know the panels are we're we're seeing everything from a first person perspective mm-hmm. you know uh, first person um um we we see in the very first panel on the, on page eleven you got like the um. Rorschach is a messy dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's no clean dishes, you know, in his apartment or place or wherever he's, um, you know, chooses to reside. You know, he looks out the window and sees the gang put the, um, you know, graffiti on the wall, right? You know, like that and looks at his mask. But we're seeing like um, we're seeing everything from his perspective. And I love the way these last three panels, we see a progression of, you know, him um um, <laughs> him putting ketchup on the um Ganga the din diner um menu and folding it over and putting it in a um you know Rorschach um you know um Rorschach uh, uh paper blot test yeah blot yeah yeah uh, and then we will all see the progression of the gang members putting another mm-hmm. shadow on the um on the wall outside of the diner yep so, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, that's an interesting. It, it's an interesting with all the nuclear tensions that this is what this gang is doing, right? You know, with all all the talk of Afghanistan and Doctor Manhattan and all the all the pins that have been, you mm-hmm. know, all the pins have been knocked out of American foreign policy, and this is an, we're seeing everyone's amped up. We have this double murder. We have gangs who are just painting like almost like anti nuclear protest art on everything. Escalation. Things are just yeah. escalating more. You know, more and more. We get the first instance of um. Um, Rorschach referring to his mask as his face. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, know, he says my skin. He's he's my he's mask. not referring to it as a mask. Yeah. You know, he's peeling off his um, you know, his his skin. You know, his skin is his mask. You know, nobody knows who he is and everything. But um, mm-hmm. you know, he the the landlady has like multiple kids and <laughs> yep. you know he he of course he's <clears throat> um being judgmental. You know, throughout all of all of his thoughts that he's putting into his journal. Yeah, he's a moralizer. So he, is. he has very strict definitions of right and wrong, and mm-hmm. he has he's a misogynistic mm-hmm. because of his mother and, and his relationship with his mother. You know, well, we'll get into yeah. that later. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. But guys, we're gonna find out more about Rorschach. Sorry, guys. You thought we weren't gonna learn about what it makes him tick? Uh, this, you haven't been this, paying attention. This guy tick. You know, he's a um, he's a, a crazy dude. <laughs> so. Uh, we're treated to, uh, you know, the guys at the newsstand talking about lamenting the fate of humanity and how the curse of running a newsstand is you see all the connections and you see how one thing causes another causes another and how things are mm-hmm. headed in a direction that's terrifying. Mm-hmm. And then um, the freight of the guy gets sick, which sort of makes a lot of sense <laughs> because he's sitting atop of a raft of bloated corpses. You'd imagine that's probably not a disease. Bloated corpses. He ate like a seagull. You know, Rock. and Hole. he's on this Rock. on the hole. Yeah. And he's on on the sea just, you know, but probably just getting sick, you know, seasick yeah. or what have you. So it's multiple things that are just, you know, affecting this guy. 
So, yeah, so it's like, and then he sees his reflection in the ocean and his blood gets caked and his face is caked in gore and he's he's just shocked and chagrined at mm-hmm. the depths he's sunk into to get home to his family and what he's had to do already mm-hmm. uh, on, on his way home. Hmm. Um, and that's that's kind of, uh, and it's it's interesting to see the, <clears throat> this disgust at the lengths he's had to go to, right? That's kind right. of what, what I'm getting from that. Right. And then uh, we cut to Viet Tower, Viet Enterprises, where Adrian is trying on some cufflinks and having a discussion with his assistant about um, there's some villains. We need to do something to zazz up the Ozymandias toy line, which apparently has financed all of this, or he's parlayed those, those monies into this sort of business empire. One thing to back up for a minute, there, Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that they they intercut the um, the the freighter, um, you know, comic with you know the two guys at the um, the newsstand talking and everything. You know, mm-hmm. the man is just complaining. The, the the guy on the ground, you know, who's reading the comic, he's complaining pretty much. Shut up! <laughs> you know, I'm still reading. <laughs> you know, you're you're just yakking and yakking and yakking. What do you think about um? the way they 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 um intercut between you know what he's talking about him reading about afghanistan and talking about you know um you know the world versus um what's going on in the freighters well it's all about the 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 parallel of the assured destruction or mutually assured destruction of the conflict of World War Three, mm-hmm. and this guy who's been given up for dead, and mm-hmm. you know he's he's still seeking victory, but on a, on top of a mound of the dead, right? Right. His comrades, mm. a couple mound of casualties. He's still pressing forward, and he's mm-hmm. only now coming to grips with what that means. Mm. And I think what's what this is meant to parallel how uh-huh. you know these two countries, the USSR and, and the USA, are, are sort of at odds. Okay. And, you know, they've they're sort of reaching a point of no return where for them to press on in their mission, you know, the things that they're going to have to do are becoming less and less stomachable. Ah, So they want to press forward, Mm -hmm. you know, they'll be doing so upon upon, lifted upon a raft of the dead. (laughs) That's a great way to put it. Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah all right now we can continue all right all right we're, we're at vitty's v- all right so we're now we're at place. adrian's house mm-hmm. ozzy mandy's his house and he comes down uh, the escalator of his fabulous uh-huh. Vite tower talking about the how the egyptians saw death as a launching point on a spiritual journey and mm-hmm. then he says to his assistant isn't that a comforting thought and then they reach the bottom of the escalator and a dude pulls a gun out and shoots adrian's assistant in the chest and then Adrian uh, picks up a, uh, is that like an ashtray? I think it's an ashtray. Something, you know, just some, big... some, some, some are, you know, object, you know, um, yeah. that's, you know, designed for it for an area. He really looks, reminds me a lot like, oh, something Bruce Wayne would do <laughs> Yep. <laughs> with his, with his quick, um, you know, positioning and taking out the, um, the gunman and everything, you know, Mm-hmm. <laughs> So this is this is his Batman tendency here. Yeah, yeah, Batman tendency being able to fight real good as a you know the in your suit in your own building. Yeah, like in your own it. building. You in know, my tower, I can fight. <laughs> no consequence. So, Quick and he's spot. also got his motif. His mm-hmm. other motif is is his obsession with a ancient Egyptian. That's his. Mm-hmm. That's a Batman tendency. In my opinion. <laughs> I think so. Uh, so he dispatches his attacker uh, with a, a shot to the dome with the. Uh, giant, you know, sort of ashtray, right. and then he s- smashes his head off the Sphinx, which I think is awesome. Yep, no dialogue, uh, people. No, no, none. no, no, bam, or you know, poof, or you know, uh, you know, no, no words. Um, nope. Everything is told through images. So, yep. um, you know, the transition of you know him going from the the shot to the um to the the, the secretary to him picking up the object to him hitting the um. You know, hitting the bad guy, you know, with the gun and everything to him, just, you know, throwing him in the water to <laughs> and it takes him two pages to do this. So the 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 I guess if you want to call some of the, you know, some of the cinematography of these these different panels, I mean, it's just it's just amazing. You know? It is. And the other thing is, this is an intentionally designed offset page. So if you look at these pages in your book, you'll see. That this is a the center. This is the centerfold spread. This is the center page. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is the 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 midpoint, the fulcrum on which the on which the um, 
the book turns here, this particular chapter. And as we know, the chapter is called A Fearful Symmetry. Ah, okay. And, now and we're getting to, into the, um, the, the, the meanings. The meanings. So not only is this, this is the plot interesting and the character is amazing and the mm-hmm. art great, mm-hmm. but these guys, it, it, and this is something that's been noted many times, and we'll put a link to a good description of this in the show notes, right? Uh-huh. We'll put that out there for everyone. You can view someone who's really thought a lot about this, <laughs> but essentially... At this point, you have the left and the right of this page. If you go back a page on each page and go forward a page on each page, you'll note that there's a symmetry so that we're going to see, you know, uh, the characters in the reverse order we saw them last time. So, uh, you know, we'll see, uh, you know, if you look behind us, we have the, um, uh, we have, uh, you know, the Black Freighter, and then we have behind that some Rorschach stuff. So you can expect to see things in that order because this is a, a perfectly symmetrical story shape. Right. Um, it's something that takes, you know, to plan this out <laughs> with three stories interweave, interwoven is, uh, it, it's a feat of, yeah, that's uh, a, 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 a monumental feat. Of, it's a feat. It's, it's a, yeah, it definitely is a miracle and it, it is real meticulous in mm-hmm. the way that, you know, they put it together and make it have, have it make sense. Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing. Um, when it was originally printed, um, you know, this is this middle, this, 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 I'm looking at it on, on an iPad, so I'm not really seeing it like that. But when it was originally printed in the um, graphic novel, you know, comic book format, then you can really see as far as the 14 and 15 being, you know, like a center page, um, yeah. a center fold like that. Right. And and so it's so super nifty. And, and it's just like, you know, I, I just want to point that out because I think that's the sort of thing that tells you how well laid every step of this is, how well planned it is. And, right. and it's something that, you know, this sort of structural trickery, uh, I like it a lot. Structural it's trickery. I, I like it. I think you're the same way because I know we talk about how much you love Lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you, we like the puzzle box things a little bit too. So oh, yeah. that, that's something yeah. we enjoy. Yep. I like to point it out. This is like, it's almost like an extra credit thing that they just decided <laughs> to do because they, they wanted to see if it could be done. It's almost incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so so, <laughs> so moving Damn, on. They did it. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, Adrian's assassin uh has a uh takes a cyanide capsule mm-hmm. and uh and dies and then adrian says after this you know two people are dead right his including his close personal assistant and he says call the toy people and cancel the extension of the ozymandias line if they ask why just tell them i don't have any enemies hmm. Hmm. And that's that. That's cold. <laughs> that's so cold. He's just so analytical, you know. Yeah. Um, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Um, so now uh, the the uh, newsstand guys are getting word about that murder suicide talk. And they're so now that news has reached them, right? So we see how that is filtered from right. the actual happenstance right. to the newsstand, and they see all the connections between everything. And we are back uh, back to the black freighter as well, like we we promised. Uh, the black, he's haunted by the the visages of the black freighter by his memory of the black freighter knowing that's heading for his family right his home mm-hmm. he's driven to get home and he's found that he could live on a little bit of salt water on the black freighter and then he sees something is moving below his raft and he realizes it's sharks the sharks are coming for him you know sharks um, they're circling they're, they're, they're circling and you know <laughs> they are they are definitely coming so inner inner juxta- you know inner inner in between these panels, you have like the um, the the guy you know reading the Black Freighter, and of course the the, the news saying guy is just talking about um, you know Vinny being a, like a real hero. I don't know how you mm-hmm. pronounce his last name again. V. Which one? Uh, Adrian's last name. V. Vite. 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 Okay. Um, I think that's how I pronounce. See again, that's the movie, and I don't. I don't remember written is written. I don't know. That may be wrong. Okay. I feel like I, if it's wrong, just go ahead and hashtag hate Scott, and I'll just deal with that. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, 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 they talk about him being a hero and, you know, I, uh, this is the impression that, you know, um, you know, Adrian gives off, um, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, they just go back and forth between that and, um, his talking about the, um, black freighter, but, you know, he just talks about, um, different things going on. Like, so like this guy killed his kids a week ago. That was with the normal family. You just never know. Um, you know, you just, his whole thing is just, you never know what's bearing down on you. You right. Know, you never know that you know what's going to happen, mm-hmm. and um, that's something that you know the guy on the black freighter is actually going through as well. You know, and yep. then like the um, the sharks, <laughs> he doesn't know the sharks are on his way. You know, so well, that's the that thing is that chapter. 
Yeah, I mean, unless you were very, unless you knew about the USS Indianapolis, right? Unless you mm-hmm. knew about that story, this mm-hmm. seems like a pretty good idea. But a lot of, you know, uh, dead, you know, dead matter is something that's going to attract the attention of some certain mm-hmm. befinned predators. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> travel I mean, across the ocean it. like that. Oh man. You know. So you end up, so you get, so what's this say? So remember, we're talking about this in the context of the history and of this world where, you know, now the sharks are here. So the thing that you did that got you where you needed to go, right? Atop the pile of corpses. Well, mm-hmm. guess what? That's right. not the, now that thing is what's attracting the thing that will, will end you. Yeah. And the whole thing, so you're this saving whole thing yourself. is, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. You're saving yourself what? You're saving yourself, but it's it's already too late. It's yep. futile because now there's more. Yep, and that's the point that he's making. You just never know mm-hmm. until um, you never know what's you, you, all you see is what's on the surface. You just never right. know um, with the stuff that you don't see until it's like too late. You know. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then again, the symmetry. So now we're going to go back to Rorschach. Uh-huh. So. Uh, Rorschach is talking about, looks like he's looking at the shadows. He mentions, um, you know, he doesn't like him. Uh, feels like the British come, closing in, picks up the note from Jacoby. Jacoby says, let's meet at 1130. Uh, come, I have information. So he retrieves his face from an alley. He says, my things are waiting for me. Mm-hmm. My face, I abandoned my disguise and became myself. And he, he's obsessed. So he is R- Rorschach. He's not, you know, he is the only Rorschach. This is the ultimate Batman tendency here because yes. in a lot of stories about Batman, we tend to see that, you know, he's more at home being, you know, Batman than in, with, with Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is the, the, um, the, um, what, what I want to call it, the, the secret identity. Well, the, um, the, the, the fake person. Right. <laughs> well, the Batman construct. is, the, yeah, yeah. And Batman is like, you know, his real self, you right. know. Um, so his real identity is that. So we see a lot of stories as far as that. And then, um, with Rorschach here is really the extreme version of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh yeah. He's just, just obsessive. And I love the, the last, the last, um, the last frame here on this page Mm -hmm. where he says, uh, maybe it's a rape, maybe it's a mugging, maybe it's a little bit of both. And then he says, uh, there's something, uh, rewarding in his eyes. Sometimes the night is generous to me. Like he, <laughs> he cannot he, wait. He's he so happy. He cannot wait. He just, he's about to get some action, and you know, you better if you're doing a crime. Oh man, you know he's on his way to to um, to, to rectify that. Now if that enjoyment, if that enjoyment of striking fear into your enemies isn't a Batman tendency, I don't know what a Batman hey, tendency is. You know, it's called deconstruction, people. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So again, the descent here. The second half we see Lori and Dan. They're getting situated in the brownstone, mm-hmm. and Lori calls Dan a big brother, which Dan seems to not uh, not care for. I mean, you know, if you're liking a female, you mm-hmm. know, you know, as as much as it seems like Dan is, you know, taking a Lori and everything, who wants to be called a big brother? You know, right. that's the worst <laughs> right. thing that you can say. You know, when you're when you're in, um, attracted to somebody that you that you're really into and everything, you don't want to be called right. a brother. And females don't want to, call, want to want to be called sisters, or whatever. You don't want to be thought about in that in that aspect. No. But um, you get, yeah, you but, get friend zone so hard. Here <laughs> oh Dan, man, oh man. So imagine how Dan is feeling right here. <laughs> I know, right? And, and think about who her ex boyfriend is. Like, think about, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, if mm-hmm. you're interested. I mean, it's plain that he's interested in her. But if you are, I mean, that's that's an act to follow. Mm-hmm. Is you know a literal god? That's a <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a mountain on the climb there. Yeah, you're following uh, Superman there, Dan. You know, right? how can you even compete? You know, so <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's funny. So all um, that all that sort of uncertainty, and he, he doesn't. He does. You're right. He does not care for uh, her statement. Oh, yeah. um, so he can't fall asleep. Yep. And we cut back to the Black Freighter. The sharks are circling. The sharks are attacking. They are finally and attacking. And get this. So this is so this is so neat. So he stabs the shark like in the brain with the mast of his ship. <laughs> and then stra- and then because the shark was kind of coming up through through his raft, his raft was sort of strapped to a zombie shark. Mm-hmm. I mean <laughs> that is shark. yeah like a like an undead shark like it's it's he's uh-huh. using a shark as a, <laughs> like as a as like an engine it's crazy right it's a motor that's an outboard motor right uh-huh. right 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 hey. and then we we're back at the newsstand where it's raining and so our attention's divided between the story and the newsstand um, 
we see um, well, we, we see a, we uh, get an introduction to another character here to though. Joey who yeah. drives a truck mm-hmm. and is a uh, a female homosexual I believe they call that the les- a lesbian <laughs> is the term they would yep. use and she has a a flyer for a uh, benefit for gay women against rape mm-hmm. and basically tells you know, tells Gus like you're putting this up <laughs> there's going to be a problem right. Yeah, but he's pretty. She, she's pretty much shaking him down, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we find at the bottom, and I'm going to point this out: our uh, captain, our uh, black freighter raider, is uh, eating raw shark. Just eating the shark raw. I'm pointing that out. So <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm not making the other half, but I'm saying that I'm just pointing it out. So <clears throat> we cut to the cops who are uh, <laughs> continuing to investigate that double homicide. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, they get a phone call. The phone call is a tip uh, telling him where he can find some raw well, hold shark. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He, while he's eating yeah. the shark, he, raw, raw shark, the guy is saying gay women against rape. Is this a joke? <laughs> 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 he just can't believe <laughs> <laughs> why, why is he so shocked about this? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so she explains to him it's a benefit gig. Um, but like Scott said, you know, she pretty much shakes him down. Like, are you going to put this up or what? Because, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he says, bringing light to the world, my ass. <laughs> oh, man, man. These characters and their interactions and, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a random thing to random. Throw in there, just random. Some comment about mm-hmm. that. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so someone has dimed out Rorschach. Yep, I mean basically that's what we're to get from this. And they go, mm-hmm. those guys go flying out of there. But mm-hmm. as soon as they hear Rorschach's, you know, that someone's put dropping in on Rorschach, they're out of there talking about running but, red but, lights. But, they but, don't but, care. But, but hold up, how do yeah. they find out? So so somebody's dimed on them. How do they find out? So so someone is called and they can't understand what he's saying or he or she is saying or whatever. You know, right. I'm just presuming whoever is on the other line. Um, and they keep pronouncing them raw, raw shark, raw shark. You know, <laughs> right. and then finally the other detective finally um just he just looks up and you know he says raw shark. He's talking about Rorschach. <laughs> <laughs> Like the number one all-side serial killer case of their entire department. Like all of a sudden, it's just drop everything, you know? Oh, man. It makes sense. You saw my Rorschach. Rorschach, you know, I can imagine how. And I can't remember if this was in a movie or not, and we'll get to that. But, you know, the way that this scene would have played out in a in a movie or a TV show, it's probably especially a TV show, would have been hilarious. A TV know? show would probably have a little more time with the detectives because they'd just start going to all the places like, you know, Rorschach mm-hmm. would mess someone up and they, you'd see them in different spots too. It'd be interesting characters. I hope we get to see something like that yeah, anyway. Exactly. I, sure I, some... I, I admire the fact that Alan Moore chose to, you know, put this type of humor in here because I think mm-hmm. it's I think it's hilarious. You know, the, the, the way they just interact and, um, you know, you add this little tidbit, you know, to, just to make you laugh because this is a dark, 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 dark graphic novel. You right. know, and they still he still chose to enter, you know, intersperse, you know, humor here and there, um, especially with these two detectives. Yeah. I mean, then these guys, these guys, these ground level guys, right? They're the same mm-hmm. guys that uh, Rorschach beat up real bad mm-hmm. when he um, <clears throat> he didn't beat him up, but he beat him at detecting. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> he, beat, he beat them at their own job. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so Rorschach, <laughs> uh, Rorschach breaks into Jacoby's house. A um, little bit, uh, I want to point something out here, and that is the name of uh, Gordia Knot Lock Company, which shows up on his lock there in the bottom left frame here. Well, hold up. Do, do, do we also mention that they're, the detectives are noticing a pattern and everything? You know? Oh, yeah. They're seeing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on mm-hmm. a second. You're right. Yep. You're right. So they're starting to see, yeah, yeah. So they're seeing. They're actually doing a, a pretty decent job, not as fast as Rorschach, but, <laughs> right. you know, <laughs> he's two they're steps figuring it out. He's like five steps ahead of them. But yeah, they're figuring it out. So you know, they go from the kitty murdered, and some tries, then then somebody tries to rack, you know, whack, um, you know, try to kill Adrian, and you know, they're figuring out it's a pattern and it's leaning somewhere. So mm-hmm. you know, they're they're doing a good job finding this out. So um, good on them. <laughs> <laughs> With their regular detective skills, you know. Yeah, regular uh, detective skills. But yeah, I just want to point that out. Absolutely. 
I want to spend more time with those guys. Those guys are cool. I kind of yeah, like yeah. them. Mm-hmm, I like that they're neat. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, <laughs> so Rorschach is, goes to meet with Moloch at 11.30. Mm-hmm. And he starts interrogating him um, good about evening, the comedian. Jacoby. Yeah, he says, good <laughs> evening. It's, it's 11.30, Jacoby. 11.30. I'm prompt. <laughs> I don't play around with the, the schedules. Right. Uh-huh. So uh, he walks in. Moloch is very, very dead. Uh, he has been shot in the forehead. His eyes are open. He's staring straight ahead. His teeth are in, which they were not when he was here last time. Yeah. And the gun is laying on the floor. R- Rorschach is basically going all around it. He doesn't know he's dead yet, but, you know, he's he's basically, um, you know, you know, talking to him about um, everything that's happened to uh, um, Dr. Manhattan, Ozzy Mandias, you know, the comedian, and his, star- uh, his, his theories and everything. And then he finally notices that... Um, um, he got, you know, Jacoby got shot in the head. Yeah. And yeah, finally noticed that's a little detail. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, you know, he grows silent and, um, yeah, the, whoever Domino Rorschach, you know, they finally got him cornered. It's the police and the police are here and they say, we're coming in. We know you're there. And Rorschach's not panicking, but he's, he's calling himself stupid. He mm-hmm. can't believe he mm-hmm. let himself mm-hmm. get caught as he looks for, <laughs> Some household implements to use for his own defense. Uh-huh. And then we are treated to one of the great action sequences in the book, and that's the uh, Rorschach's fight against the officers who come to take him as he lights a flamethrower uh-huh. <laughs> and burns like everything in the oh, whole apartment. Man. You know, his his motto is never surrender, and he's basically just whispering that to himself, never surrender. And, you know, mm-hmm. he's he's not he's not taking it lying down, guys. <laughs> He's using pepper spray and flamethrowers and his gas gun grappling hook as they chase him from the first to the top floor. And then he jumps, smashes through the window, the bedroom window, comes flying out to the street, <laughs> uh, lands on his, uh, lands a little awkwardly, says, no pain, no pain, get up, and then is descended on with uh, boots and fists and clubs and the entire NYPD is coming for him. Yeah, And yeah. they lift up his mask. And he yells, no, my face, give it back. And they say, who the hell is he? And it's the the end is nigh guy. Yeah, we finally, finally see who Rorschach is. And that, that end is nigh guy that we see from the very beginning. This is who yes. he is, people. This mm-hmm. is who he is. You know. He is Rorschach. <laughs> the red so you've guy. Been, he's been here the whole time, ever since he got flipped off by that dude out mm-hmm. from Vetty Blake's. So. Now, now, I know when I first read this initially, you know, my very first time, I was genuinely surprised by this. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. that, that was a very good, good um, play and shock. So <laughs> um, it's, it's good that, you're, um, that your wife <laughs> spotted that early on. I swear, she, I'm not even giving her leading stuff. <laughs> that is stuff. just like, awesome that she, she, she deduced that. You know, that was one of the things that, that I was super impressed by. I like, I like, was I was writing down. I take notes, but she'll she'll I'll mm-hmm. kind of sit there while she reads it, and she'll talk to me a little bit. I take notes, uh-huh. and that time she said that, and, and I was just like, it just was like writing real furiously, <laughs> like, like writing that down. That is that is really good, Holly. You know, um, that yeah. is uh, you were on the money as far as that. So that's right. We we see his face. I mean, we see the um. Well, the mask or, he wears. Yeah, we see the mask. So we've seen his face the whole time. This is the first time we see his mask. Yeah, exactly. Right. So um, he's just screaming and hollering, you know, giving my face, you know, face back, and you know, the police are wondering who the hell is he, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and they they just can't believe. So I don't know what you would just imagine him to actually look like in person, but uh, Rorschach is a myth, you know, in the yep. underground and everything. So. To, to to get off his um to take off his mask and realize um that you know he's just an average Joe you know he's he's nothing to be afraid of he um you know he just looks like an ugly little zero is what one right. of the cops say <laughs> he said right. it's an ugly little zero is like the terror you know the terror of the underworld <laughs> 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 you know and the police kids just can't wait <clears throat> to lock him up because they figure it's karma for all the stuff that um you know he's done to them. You know, yeah. to like the underworld, and they're well, ready they don't to, like um, these guys. And and remember that the, the mm-hmm. Keen Act was because of police riots, right? Right. Because right. they couldn't do their job because they they didn't like the vigilantes coming in and doing their jobs for them. It was almost like they were scab laborers, you know. Yeah. And they yeah. were an organization, so you can imagine that they were taking you know a little bit of extra. 
yeah, they, pleasure they, that, that Rorschach had decided to resist so strenuously. Well, they, they definitely took umbrage with the costume, you know, adventures and everything. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this they they can't wait to get him back, you know, into um, you know, into a jail cell and everything. So the chapter ends. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? Yes, and uh, <clears throat> as you see, the last line anyone speaks in this uh, chapter is "Everything balances." Everything balances. The last panel is the first panel. That's crazy. It's crazy. Just slightly different because of how the and in, in an homage to the way that that you know particular couplet ends, a little bit of a slide, mm-hmm. like a sly rhyme, because it looks like it should rhyme, but it doesn't. Right, 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 right. So you heard me, you heard me pause a little bit because it did not actually rhyme with I. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it sort of just makes you think a little bit, but I mean that's 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 deep. Deep deep deep. Yes. Deep deep. So this so this chapter, you know, catalogs the the time directly after Dr. Manhattan has left. Mm-hmm. Um there is no Dr. Manhattan anymore. And mm-hmm. we see his, you know, his absence felt keenly by every single person. Mm-hmm. You know, uh by, you know, the general public feeling his absence, you know, mm-hmm. starting to to crack a little under the pressure of nuclear right. armageddon right um this whole epi- this whole ground level you know uh it's it, like we said it's in the ground mm-hmm. it's uh gritty and punchy mm-hmm. and you know it's a it's a th- it's really a thriller of the you know it's really really a thriller right yeah um ending with the betrayal or well not, I don't know, who knows what, what happened here but the diming out of rorschach by somebody yeah uh, you know maybe moloch who knows what happened here yeah i mean it plays out uh it plays out very cinematic you know, um, mm-hmm. throughout like the whole the whole chapter, and it really gives you a um, well. Once we get into the next chapter, we'll really delve into who um, you know Rorschach is. But mm-hmm. this is like the um, the beginning of well, the first it's sort of like the first the first part of a two chapter you know yes. um, um, thing about Rorschach. You know, this if, is like yeah. Go ahead. If three and four were the <clears throat> the you know the end point like the end of the 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 focus chapter on Doctor Manhattan mm-hmm. and then the origin chapter on Doctor Manhattan where he mm-hmm. explains himself five and six are like that for Rorschach so next week you know or next time we upload an episode <laughs> whether it's right away or next week depending yep. on how yep. we uh, decide to we'll, do that we'll, we'll be getting into the um you know who is Rorschach and we'll where he comes from pretty, pretty interesting characters in that chapter and everything so yeah so if you've been waiting we're at we're here so there's going to be a lot a lot more rorschach to come he's a super interesting and yet in many ways uh despicable character (laughs) so he's not very nice you know and he has a a very tragic you know background which a lot mm -hmm. um, like scott said we'll we'll get into a lot more um you know in his um in that particular chapter but yeah the the way this particular um um chapter five starts and ends is just and meets in the middle with um you know adrian and that um that that, that centerfold is a um a very unique very complex way to tell a story mm-hmm. that uh i don't know has a, a, if it's been duplicated or even attempted, you know, by a lot of other author, you know, offers, but it really goes to show you the way a comic can be structured and mm-hmm. how it can be taken seriously. You know, um, funny thing I did want to just, you know, um, Bill Maher had made a recent comment about um, comic book, <laughs> you know, comic book fans and, you know, comic books not being, really for uh just being for kids you know yeah. and he really pissed off a lot of um a lot of comic book um a lot of fans of you know comic book stuff and everything and he he just sort of this was after stan lee had um passed away and you know he didn't he didn't really understand the fact okay well you know the guy died and you know a rest in peace and everything but you know it's time to 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 let go of the toys time to let go of you know the um childish stuff and everything and grow up and they actually read real books with no pictures you know if you need right. a picture to um to, to tell your story then you do, you haven't really did um develop mature you know you know maturely or whatever so yep. the frustrating thing about that is um those type of people not knowing how or or not really experiencing the 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 the, the um the, the 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 maturity of a graphic novel like this and how yes. 
knowing you know how, how things are structured in in in, in, in really in uh, uh, regular comics and how it actually um you know got into the maturity of what Watchmen was how comics actually grew up after this point you yes. know so I did want to make a point about that <clears throat> it is an adult medium and the idea that it that that the uh, you know to the pictures don't add to the you know uh, the statement is really quite frankly silly and dumb. Yeah, I I, th- I think it actually even you know adds much more because you have to really especially with this one this graphic novel here you really right. got to dissect and actually pay attention just as you would reading a book even though you use your imagination to 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 to, to really um, understand everything the author and writer is saying you can't really discount you know a person who actually puts time and effort into drawing detail and actually mm-hmm. putting story structures and everything together, not just some Bugs Bunny type stuff. But, um, I mean, it's got to be some real good appreciation that goes into that Bill Maher or anybody else who feels that comic books aren't really for, um, you know, um, adults. You know, right. um, this is a medium that has grown this has grown so much, you know, during like the past century, you know, to the, to the 20th century all the way up till now. Why do you guys think about that? Why do you guys think comic books are so popular and comic book material is so popular nowadays? Because it is an adult medium. You know, yep. it's not just for kids, even though it has like, you know, colors and, you know, superheroes and stuff. It's a lot more stories out there uh, that that are, are there are being told that are not about superheroes. You know, um, I, don't, I don't know. I just got on my little rant there. <laughs> well, everybody hates Bill Maher, so whatever. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Because anyway, <laughs> but um, all right. So yeah, off my, my my little rant. So the um the the chapter ends with um a little excerpts on the Black Freighter. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's production history, sort of uh, some information about the guys that wrote it. You know, okay. a little bit of that sort of stuff. Yeah, Joe Orlando, he's actually a um a artist. You know, he's a real artist and everything. So oh really? I was, yeah, I was kind of um. <laughs> I, I was I sort of laughed at the way they integrated him in there and everything. I think it was sort of the, like to put homage and everything, you know, to right. him because he's really significant in the creation of you know um, a lot of EC type. Um, uh, I, I would think the Black Freighter story is a, um, a homage to how comic books were presented back in the fifties with like a lot of those you know crazy horror tales and everything, and they were mm-hmm. really explicit. You know, this was after, um, you know, the Wortham things, the, the the Frederick Wortham stuff, when he published his his little book um, just saying that, you know, uh, Batman and Robin were gay <laughs> um, and, you know, all that stuff. I think um, and a lot of horror, you know, um, comics were, you know, out at that point in time where superhero stuff wasn't wasn't as popular. I think Black Freighter sort of like harkens back to that. Absolutely. It's like they're like they, you know, this is where they uh, say things like the superhero comics sort of cratered and now pirate comics are where it's at in this Mm -hmm, world. mm -hmm. That's all people want to read now. Pirates. (laughs) But yeah, great chapter. Great chapter. So interesting. It sets everything up for next chapter where we're going to get to learn about Rorschach's backstory. And, you know, uh, I'm real excited to get into that. It's really neat. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, yeah, we'll be back, you know, to talk about the next chapter. So, again. You could catch us at um, you can send us some feedback watching Watchmen and Nerd Cyclopedia. Follow us on Facebook um, at Nerd Cyclopedia. Catch us in our Facebook group at Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. That's our Facebook. We, we, we love to, you know, hear your feedback. And we mm-hmm. got a YouTube channel, Nerd Cyclopedia Ooh. YouTube channel that we're, um, you know, that has our, um, you know, our podcast and stuff on there. So definitely catch that and subscribe. Click subscribe, you know, the subscribe button to that. Tell all your friends. <laughs> you know everybody um, bring them on um, follow us on twitter at watchman podcast one not no no t at the end just the one you know and also mm-hmm. at nerd cyclopedia and listen to us you know we, we love doing these podcasts for you guys and um you know we love talking about the watchman it's our favorite thing in the world and we're so glad you you came with us and we can't wait to see you next time All right. see you when we see you guys see you